All right, that's it for the intro. Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today, I want to talk about Helm 0.9 because there was an update. There's some great fixes and some great new features. But before I do this, I want to talk about a little trick that I found today to work around the stereo imaging limitations of Helm. This is specific to Ardor, so it won't help you if you're running Qtractor, unless Qtractor can do something similar. So, as an example, I'm going to use this track that I made today using entirely Helm. And we have the kick drum. Uh, we have the snare drum. And the snare is using that trick. But it was most important for saw, saw, super saw, for this. Now, before, it sounded more like this. When we do this trick, it sounds like this. Hear the difference? There was virtually no stereo image because Helm's current biggest limitation is the lack of any way to create a stereo image apart from the reverb unit. So if you take a look, we don't have anything that allows us to pan the oscillators. If we could pan the oscillators, I could use the two oscillators, pan them left and right, and that should do it. Funny thing is, right now, like this isn't passed to the other instance, so I'm, right now I'm only playing on the left channel. Because now, Ardor is internally running two instances of Helm plugin for this particular instrument, and it's feeding them the same MIDI data and using the same presets. So whatever I change, like if I change this to a square wave, like, you know, you can hear that both instances react to this, right? But if I play on the keyboard here, only one reacts because if I turn a knob, that sends an information to Ardor, oh, the plugin patch has changed. And Ardor says, all right, we have to update the other instance. But this just sends information through the GUI directly to the plugin, and it's not passed through Ardor, so it can't send the same information back to the plugin. But the same MIDI data from Sequencer is fed here. So the oscillators, even with unison voices, like here we have 15 voices and 100 cents detune, so it's the maximum, like it can't go higher. I kind of wish it could go even higher because sometimes I would like to have the option to go to 1000 cents or 1012, like a whole octave, and then use an envelope to go from that to no detune, for example, that could create some pretty interesting effects. Matt, if you're watching, Think about it. I, I might file an issue on GitHub. So, yeah. Anyway, it's still very narrow. It's perfectly mono. All the unison voices are panned in the center. Also, the noise generator is using one noise generator, and it's, again, panned in the center. I kind of wish I could have two for left and right, but you can't do this inside Helm. And even the delay is... Mono. It's perfectly mono. Only the reverb unit can create any stereo image at all. And that's, like, nice, but that's a big limitation. But we can now, using Ardor, override this. And to do this, I'm gonna take a... I'm gonna make a new patch, just to show you. And if I change this to a saw oscillator, disable the second one, increase unison voices, increase the tune, you can see that's pretty noisy in the high spectrum, but it's perfectly mono. Now, we can make this stereo by going to Pin Connections. I'm right-clicking on the instrument plugin, Pin Connections, and here we have Pin Configuration. We need to go to Manual Config, and now we can add another instance of Helm. Now we have to connect 
the MIDI input so it's fed to both instances and then just grab one of the two in outputs and feed this to the output. And we have wide stereo image now. And the same will work for noise. The noise in its basis is mono. But with this, we have a stereo noise. It's pretty cool. Another interesting thing is that let's make this no detune, so it's mono again. But everything that is random, for example, a random LFO, because the LFOs have random, the sample and hold style random, and a smooth random, and you can see what is generated. If we can speed this up, it's gonna make fa changes faster. And now if I use some noise, let's enable the filter and root the LFO to the filter cutoff. Ah, something's not perfectly, yeah. The left instance got it right, but the right instance didn't. So let's try, no, uh, not that. Let's try pin connections and remove one instance create another instance and redo our trick. Oh yeah, now we have it. That's a problem. Uh, maybe I'll file a bug or maybe this could be done with Helm, like on the Helm side. Anyway, the point is the randomness is independent between the two Helm instances. So the left channel is wandering with the LFO completely independently from the right channel. So it create some interesting effects. However, you need to apply the trick of creating another instance in the manual config in the pin configuration and connecting the MIDI input and audio output after you do the routing because that's not conveyed properly. All right, that's it for the intro. If there's one takeaway you are gonna have from this video, let it be it. Like that you can override the unison mono and noise mono-ishness problem in hell until Matt solves it. Matt, solve it! I mean, thanks, man. Your synth is great, really. I made this track. I really enjoy it. But now I have something to do, and that is open a Coke can or soda, as you call it in, I don't know, UK? Can you hear the bubbles? All right, transition. Okay, I've got my order set up. I've created eight tracks with new Helm. But before we start making music, I want to talk about installing Helm 0.9 because it's not as simple as you might think. All right, to get Helm, go to the website tittle.org slash Helm. And there, there's a big download Helm beta button. You press it and here you can pay something uh, or you can click in this box and press remind me. But if you type here five bucks and buy, you're eligible for a cool sticker. I got mine. And I highly recommend you do that. If not necessarily like when you start, you can just, you know, start using it, learn it. And then when you have some spare change, just drop it Matt's way, you know. Open source is free, but it's not free to make. These people spend a lot of their lives making the software, which is great. So I think it's very important to support them financially. Drop them two bucks or 50 cents, I don't know. Drop them 50 cents, yo! Once you download it, you will get a Deb package. That is a Debian installer. So you can open it with GDB, for example, if you have it installed or you can use DPKG. But the problem with it is that it's misleadingly identified as an older version. So to actually be able to install this package, you have to first remove your old existing one. So you have to type sudo apt get remove helm. And then you can go, oh, then you hit enter, you type your password, blah, 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 blah. And then you get asked 
And then you get asked if you really want to do this. I don't, so I press N. After you remove that package, you will be able to install this new one. You might need to open your downloads and click on it again, because there should be a menu to refresh, but I can't see it. And then it will install and it will run. Then you can load it in Ardor, and there you go. This is it. All right, on to the features. So the first feature I want to talk about is the one that, like, shouts at you when you open Helm. And that is a much more responsive waveform preview and a master level peak meter. So that's great, because you can see what you're doing. Uh, this isn't actually a slider. This just marks the zero decibel level. So you know that if something crosses this brighter line, it's above zero decibels, and that's not good. Second feature I want to talk about is the changes to the filter. The filter can now be disabled entirely before there was an all-pass mode that actually did something and it changed the, the relative phase of different frequencies. And people were confused about this and it produced strangely looking waveforms that sounded okay because our ears are not too sensitive to phase changes. So you can have two waveforms that look very different that sound completely identical unless you mix them and then phase cancellation comes into play but that's a different topic so the new filter has uh, much more controls the first thing you'll notice is that we have this little slide here and what it does it can mix between low pass band pass and high pass modes and the cool thing is that you can modulate this with an lfo or an envelope so well that gets that makes me inspired to make some Reesey, weird, wobbly basses. The second thing you'll notice is that we have a sharper, a steeper filter type, because this is 12 decibels per octave and this is 24, so more stages. And we also have a shell type, which is low or high shell filter, more like an NEQ but also a peak filter. So we can make a notch with this, which is very useful for some, you know, neuro funky basses. Another great thing about the filter is that now it has a drive option and it has some non-linearities modeled so it will distort like a real physical unit which is really cool and you know it sounds a little bit different than the distortion unit so I really like this Good job on that filter lad! Another quick change I want to talk about is that the sub oscillator can now go one octave lower than before there's just you know this little switch that you can hit and it will make sounds lower than before You can see how our notch filter is making weird things to our waveform, huh? Awesome. Another cool thing, and this is really big, is that the polyphonic modulation sources can now drive monophonic destinations. That might sound confusing, but before, when you hit poly LFO, for example, or filter envelope, you were unable to drive the formant, the stutter, the arpeggiator, the beats per minute, the volume, the distortion, the delay parameters or the reverb, because all of that is monophonic. That means you have one control and that processor operates on all the notes mixed together. So it didn't quite make sense to assign a polyphonic modulation source to a monophonic destination because you can hit a chord and you have five notes playing and each one has the envelope in a different place and the LFO in a different place, and it has a different note number or different velocity and different aftertouch and stuff. But now, simply, the last pressed note is used so we can do very cool stuff, like, for example, use the amplitude envelope to drive the reverb amount. But you have to enable it. Of course, we have to have the reverb at zero. And now you can hear that we have something that 
has a reverb that is immediately cut off when the note ends. And, you know, to do something like this without this functionality, well, first, you could have tried using monophonic LFO, but it's not synced to notes, so... Or you could do manual automation, but that sucks. So this opens up a whole new world of possibilities of making cool sounds that incorporate all the effects. You can use a distortion with LFO for each note, and, you know, it's gonna sync, you can wobble this. It's fantastic. I made three little tracks during the holidays and after, and this rocks, <laughs> really. Another small one is that now there is a random keyboard modulation source, and that will produce a single random value for each pressed note. So, for example, if I plug this to the tune and switch to our oscillator, each pressed note will have a slightly different tuning, or not so slightly different. Okay, I have my MIDI keyboard hooked up. So let's make this very, very delicate because now it's horrendous. All right, let's just disable this and I'm gonna play a chord. Now let's enable it, I'm gonna play it again. Every time I hit it, every note is slightly detuned differently. So, well, in, in small amounts, this can give amazing amount of life into the sound, make it feel more analog, because the old analog electronic physical synthesizers, they are, wasn't very stable with the tuning. Like, you know, people are so nostalgic about the old school synthesizers, but to keep this thing in tune throughout a whole gig, with hot lights on the stage, that was a horrible thing, you know? Really, you don't want that, like, because the resistors and the capacitors inside heat up, they change their parameters, and the tuning of the synth goes off the freaking window. So, people then developed analog synthesizers with digital brains to keep this tuning stable, but oh, no, that's kind of like a hybrid. Some people say it's the best thing ever, didn't play with it. Anyway, but you can dial in some of that analog warmth, and that is imperfections, you know? The perfect thing is digital, and it's sterile. Like, some people don't like it, but, for example, that's why we like saturation so much. Also, because it makes things sound louder without them being louder, you know? We, we assign saturation, we assign distortion to be an integral part of loud sounds, like explosions, loud rock guitars and stuff. So if stuff is distorted, we think that it's loud, even if it's actually quiet in the mix. Anyway, that was supposed to be a short one, but it wasn't. So, uh, back to the distortion. The distortion unit now has a dry-wet control, and that is great, because you can distort your sound. back the original, undistorted one. Also, we have now four different distortion functions, which is really cool. The default one is the soft clipping, which is generally what we need to get this tube-like drive effect. I'm gonna actually use a sine wave. So we can better assess what it's doing. I'm gonna make it quieter so we can see the whole waveform, because that's important. Uh, we could also have some spectral view of what we're doing. So, without distortion... Like, okay, we, have, we still have the filter. And you can see that the filter adds a little bit of distortion. And we have the notch, which is actually, which is of course non-neutral. Now, we have a true sine wave, a pure tone. Now if I distort this, watch the waveform in the spectrum. We get something that looks very much like a square wave, and has all the odd harmonics. Oh, I think I didn't disable my random tuning all the way. So now let's just dial this down and go to hard clipping and see what that does. 
So we have their sine wave. And you can see on the waveform. And the spectrum behaves and sounds much different, much more harsh. So that is basically like a digital clipping. Soft clip is like analog clipping, hard clip is like digital clipping. There's also two types of folding distortion. And you can think of the linear as the hard and sine as the soft folding. Just watch the waveform because that's gonna tell you what's happening better. You can see that our waveform gets reflected at a certain ceiling back down. And then the reflection gets reflected again and again and again. That's really cool. And for example, if I use an LFO to drive the drive, we get something. Let's tune this down. We get something that sounds like FM, like frequency modulation. Even the waveform looks like that. So that's cool. Uh, but there's also, you know, the... But there is also the sine fold, which is more gentle. Let's take a look at that. You can see that the reflection is like gently bent. It's not sharply just mirrored. It's gently bent. So we get a similar quality of FMness, but without the super harsh high frequencies. And again, let's just have fun with the LFO. Pretty cool. You might think that this is frequency modulation. It's not. Actually, I would like to try if I can do the same thing with frequency modulation. Oh, sorry. Ah, I'm in I'm in modulation assignment mode. Let's use the cross modulation. I guess I should use something like All right, this is not, not, not the same thing. Let's go three octaves. Yeah, so... Distortion types. Cool new things can be done. And... The last two ones I want to talk about is now in the About menu, we have some options. Uh, in the plugin version, there's just, you know, animated graphics and check for updates, but we have the window size. By default, Helm runs in 100 size. But you can make it smaller if you have a smaller screen, or bigger, or much bigger. In the standalone version, which I have opened here, we have also more options for audio output, it, it can use Jack or Alsa. I don't know how it works on Windows, I didn't test it. And we can select the output port for Jack and we can also test it easily without pressing a note, which is really cool. Also we have the sampling rate and the, the buffer and we have the MIDI input options. So that's it, this is the Helm standalone. That's it for the features, let's put them to good use and make some music. Uh, I made Helm a little bit smaller. How can I initialize the patch? Can't. I want to figure a way, figure out a way to uh, show to you guys what I'm pressing on my keyboard. Oh, great! That works. Oh, anyway, now I've just noticed. <laughs> you can see it when I'm playing in Helm. In Helm as well, but well, now you can see it wherever you look. Good, bad, annoying, crappy, fabulous, happy now. Let's just bring, drop some reverb on this. And that reverb trick with uh, the amplitude envelope driving the reverb is pretty, na pretty nice. Funny stuff. Right, 
not too much. I can also add a second oscillator. Let's make it a stepped saw wave. Whoa, it's tuned way too high. Let's give it some unison. Tune it. Maybe pitch it up a bit. Dear. Okay, because now we have the patch practically done, I'm gonna use the fantastic dual instance stereo trick to get our saws nice and wide. And I'm also gonna drop some reverb after this. Mm, let's get roomy. Where's roomy? I should have it in the Favorites, why don't I have it? Rumi, come here, Rumi. Rumi is a nice little reverb. That sounds very, very smooth. Awesome. Could also do something else to make this a little bit, a little bit, a little bit nicer, and that is use the poly LFO to drive the pitch of the notes, but very, very slightly. Let's drive it a lot to see if it's doing anything. It is. Let's use the random control to change the speed of the LFO. Make it slower. I'm gonna, ah, oh, sorry, I'm gonna change this to seconds. So now every note not only has, well, let's also make it random, a different random LFO detuning it slightly. Slightly, I said, yeah, let's go eight. And four. You know, it's always just a little, tiny little bit of extra life uh, in the sound, some non regularities. Let's try to write some chords. I actually wanted to make this, uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm missing the button, but it's about 126. I have a melody in my head. Like this. Ta, 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 ta. This work. Ta. Resolve. Oh, funny. We're just having the same note. This doesn't sound nice.
Na. Nope. Pa, pa, pa. Yeah, it has to be major. And this has to be major too. Or we can add uh, what do we have here. Uh, G. Let's go with F. Mm. No, bad. We can make this kind of house, bouncy house track. Let's call this Saw Cards. And let's make them, let's make a kick. Because, well, what would be house music without a kick? Nothing, I say. Nothing. Let's have just one. Uh, yeah. Okay. On a C note, I'm going to just loop over. This region, I'm gonna solo this. I'm gonna change my su sound to sine wave. Hello. Okay, I got it looped, looped, so I can work on the patch easily. So, first thing, it's silent, uh, it's quiet. Then it's a bit high. Then it's a bit slowly starting, then it's not fading out like a drum should. Yep. And then I'm going to use the amplitude envelope to change the pitch. And we have our kick, dude. Let's now use the high pass filter. Size the low end a bit. We can also maybe add a little bit of an envelope to that too. Ah, no, not this envelope depth. Ah, yeah, that that's that's good because it should be there, but it's resonating. I'm going to use the mod envelope. It's kind of an additional envelope to add a little bit of noise. Maybe too much. Yeah, just to make a little bit tint of and some soft clipping. And that should be it. Now we can add a compressor or first, rather, an equalizer. I'm going to go with EQ, Thank You, Stereo. Let's loop our kick and see the spectrum here. And let's maybe emphasize the high end a bit. So it will cut through the mix nicely. I don't know why it's, it might get lost. And then let's add a compressor. What the f why YouTube videos start playing in the background randomly? Okay, never mind. Well, that's much sharper. I know it's a little bit painful, so I'm gonna back it off a bit. But we need a thumping kick. And we actually need this four on the floor beat, so. I'm going to expand this track, draw some more notes. Oh, it's too fast. It's too fast for house. Let's go with 115, maybe. Yeah, let's duplicate, shift D, three duplicates. Now we have the kicks all over the chords. Now let's do some sidechain compression on the chords. So I'm going to add a calf sidechain compressor and go for the pinout, enable the sidechain input, pick my kick, root it to the sidechain input, close this, 
and enable the sidechain input because otherwise it's gonna work just like a normal compressor. That should do. could have an iteration with more shift D enter with more notes on the top to just you know open up the score these chords make this brighter oh what happened ah, I know I probably have let's try it I put a note here no I don't have I don't have MIDI notes linked by default but something didn't quite hit. Mm, something didn't quite hit. Why? Alrighty. Well, basically, I'm just adding octaves. I might try something different. Ah. And then a slight alteration in the end. Okay. Now, this is very boring, so let's add a filter. Um, we could use the Helms filter. Maybe let's do this. I'm also going to uh, consolidate this range, so we have just one. Uh, let's let's show off another feature, which is very cool. Let's use the modulation wheel to drive the filter cutoff, uh, but in reverse. And now let's make this a low pass filter. Non-resonant, yeah. Mm, I don't really want to have distortion on this. And now we can do A for a automation, controllers, controller 015, modulation wheel or lever channel one. This will open up the automation lane for MIDI data for CC control one, which is the mod wheel. For channel one, because we have 16 MIDI channels. And now, if I have this all the way down, it should, it should leave our filter. Okay, maybe let's not make it in reverse because we're gonna be confused. Let's gonna go up, make this filter low by default. And let's see. Yeah, now I can use this to fade in. For some reason, the two instances don't follow it the same way. It's interesting. Very interesting. I'm gonna try and maybe Go to pin connections, remove one instance, and add edit, edit and again, reconnect the inputs and outputs, and see if it happens again. No, now it's okay. So there's some little problem to report here with this. It starts a little bit too low. I wonder if you don't have any envelope no all righty that's our chords uh, now let's let's duplicate all these kicks there and let's make a hi-hat I'm going to duplicate one kick pattern 
select right square bracket to loop around the selected one and then go L. I'm going to make a hi-hat sound out of this. For that, I'm going to use the noise. I'm going to use some feedback. Make it short. Change the feedback with the amplitude. Interesting sounds. This adds kind of a comp filter, which is nice because it sounds metallic and hi-hats are made of metal, so it makes sense. We can also use some reverb and we can also make it sidechain like by using an external envelope. Let's use this mod envelope. Okay, I'm going to also use a hapless filter. And I'm going to change the notes for the hi-hat. Yeah, I'm going to something like this. Let's see if it will work. It should. Yeah, so now I'm going to duplicate this three times. Uh, select this region, consolidate it into one, and now duplicate this, I don't know, seven times? Yeah. Oh, I messed something up. I know what. With consolidating ranges of MIDI, it's going to truncate it to the... Uh, it's going to make it shorter, which is a little bit annoying because often I just want to have a bar long thing. I need to correct this afterwards, so I think I'm gonna report an error. Uh, it's not it's not high pitched and it's not short enough. Yeah. I want something like this. And then let's make a bass. Which is gonna be a funky electro funky actually. Do 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 do. We're gonna need a one bar pause and we definitely need to take care of the notes. has to be delayed. Even more. Oh yeah, but that patch isn't particularly what I want, so I'm gonna use just a Lopez filter, make it duller. Oh, why so dull? Hello? Why this note isn't playing? Bum, dum, bum, 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 dum. A little bit of a progression. Bum, bum, bum. Bum. Bum, bum. Huh. Interesting. Could be. That could be our first bass line. Let's loop over it and ah, I changed the waveform accidentally. 
Why did it change? Why did it stop to play? Hello? This thing should sound. Hmm, what's going on? I'm gonna delete this Helm instance because there's nothing too fancy. I'm gonna insert another one. So we have a brand new patch. And if that doesn't work, Let's use the mod wheel to control the filter. Maybe let's try this up. It's there. It's doing its job. I want to try some. Applying modulation to a saw wave doesn't do very much interesting things because there's a, this high slope, the same as with square waves. So you need some in-between slopes to have interesting results with modulation. That could nicely work. This monophonic. And let's do some pitch bends. Actually, portamento. This should bend. Because we have auto. Okay. A bit of a reverb could be nice, but I want to apply the reverb only to mid and high frequencies without the bass because it's going to muddy the sub bass in this instrument. So I'm going to use Call Freer because it has a low and high cast, high cut filters. And we can listen to just the reverb. You see we can cut off the bass so that reverberated bass doesn't mess up our I just want just a, like very subtle hint of reverb because without it we can try also to compress this maybe with reverb Tighten it up a bit. Let's duplicate it three times. Uh, and hmm. And now let's consolidate regions. Consolidate a range. And make sure it ends on a bar line. And now we're gonna use controllers or oh, polyphonic pressure. Controllers, controllers, 
one modulation wheel channel one and here is our awesome fantastic low pass filter control <laughs> Electro funky, isn't it? That happens a little bit too quickly. I think I need to lower the bass level of the reverb. Uh, sorry, of the of the. Yeah, uh, and if you if you put the last point on the on the on the bar line, it often just disappears. So I just put it there, then press Alt to disable grid and just move it slightly to the left, so it's not here. Ah. Uh. Oh dear, no, 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 not what I wanted. Interesting sound, anyway. I think I actually need to make this much, much slower fade in. Let's go to 32. And, ah, uh, all right. Then let's duplicate this. The cool thing about CC automation is that it's embedded into the media regions, it's saved with them on the disk, and when you duplicate a media region, the CC automation is also duplicated. If you move it, it's also moved, so that's very convenient. The plugin automation of, like, if I automated these things, it would be just there, and I would have to move it manually, unless you know a way to glue it to the regions, but I don't know of any. Like, I think I knew it, but I don't know, they removed the option, I just lost it. Alright, so now, the second part, I wanted to start at the 32, I wanted to end at 64. With shift, I can lock myself to one axis. If you press shift and start moving left, you're, left, you're locked to time translation. If you press shift and then drag up, you're locked to vertical, to value translation. That's very cool, because makes it easier to not just mess up something. I'm gonna save this session, by the way. And here, I want to add more variation. Whoa, that's fast. And then some high note. Eh, shift right click to delete a note in the edit mode, which is what I'm at in. Okay, let's listen. Okay, I want just to duplicate this latter part. So I'm going to shift D. I'm going to drag the region. Consolidate again, make sure my region ends at the bar line. And there's a problem. Um, the automation gets sampled for some reason at grid intervals, I guess. And it basically, and it's switched to discrete mode, which is weird. And this is especially weird because I don't know if I can change this per clip. So you can just right click here and go mode linear or discrete. And discrete will like apply an immediate change, but hold the previous value right until that point. So that's not what I want. Shift and drag and 64. Or maybe I'll insert another point here. Let's go E. Control? How do I add the point here, dude? D for draw. 
press. Done. Okay, let's go 48 and just, hmm, I don't know. I'll draw another two points and make a ramp to go to the full thingy and let's, ah, the point disappeared. I have to make sure it's not touching that bar line. Let's play the whole thing and listen. Actually, let's listen from the chords. Final, final one. I want it to be different. Maybe this very short. Yeah. All righty. I want to add some percussion. So let's make another hi hat. Ah, hi hat two. So before, like previously, I like I was making all this, you know, fancy media routing. But that was when I was using Zenith of FX. So I'm gonna make this kind of like snare, but hit off beat sometimes. I don't know how it's gonna sound. Let's check it out. I think that's nice. Let's make this a ringing hi hat. So I'm gonna try making some maybe triangle waves. Tune them vastly different. Intermodulate them. Automate pitch. Change the pitch with envelope. Add feedback. Change feedback pitch. Nah, not so much. Oh, that sounds like a wooden stick. Nice. All right, nice balance. Let's add a high pass filter. Oh, maybe with some wooden sticky resonance to give some weight to this thing. Try distorting it a bit, because why not? And some reverb, of course. No, reverb, I'm gonna add roomy to this. I will introduce this sound here. The latter part, duplicate three times. It's a little bit too low. No, too much, too much of the... Let's select these. Right square bracket, loop it around. Now the main thing is, does it provide a feeling of 
increased energy in the music because that's what it's for. To give the feeling of progress. I think so. I think this saw chords are super cheesy actually. <laughs> Actually, very, very cheesy. Now let's shorten this part and pattern. And make a uh, noise. I'm, gonna, I'm calling this type of sound pre-noise. It's a... Uh, it's gonna be kind of a noise sweep to emphasize the change of the change in the song arrangement or like transition to a next theme. Ah, sorry. All right, I want noise. Let's use the band pass. And just give it some. Nice and simple. But we can make it more interesting by using an LFO in a random mode. Make it faster and give it some wiggle. Uh, less wiggle and more speed, if it's possible, please. Looks like it isn't. I'm gonna, try to use, I'm gonna try to use another LFO to do the same thing. But tune it slightly differently. Ah, uh, a little bit too much. Four, and this is 12. Okay, let's go five and five, all right. It's done. Now let's duplicate, like make it two instances to get these nice stereo-ness, this nice stereo wideness of the noise. And also the random LFOs. Okay, let's listen. Sweet, but very uh, very quiet. Let's just bump this up, louder, and listen. Very nice transition, actually. I would filter out the lows, but there actually isn't any bass playing here, so it doesn't inter interfere with any low. But if we filter out the bass, we're gonna improve the you know the the thump of this transition because there was no bass at so at, at all and then the bass hits there is actually too much happening at once oh i shift deleted the whole thing shift right clicked And I also think I need to introduce some changes in this first part. Let's 
Tschüss. Bis dann. We can actually duplicate this. See what happens. Yeah, but it should be much quieter here. So we need to enable velocity tracking because by default Helm ignores the node velocity. So I'm just gonna ramp it up to 100%. Let's verify that our could be louder. And this, I'm gonna make it quieter. So it's 64 velocity, let's go to 32 and see what happens. Not sure if it was applied. Could be. All right, I think, uh, I think we should stop here. There are two more Helm instances in this project and they are waiting for you to program them. This patch, the whole Ardor 5 session will be available for download. The link will be in the description of this video. So you can check it out, dissect it, uh, make some changes. If you do, upload it somewhere and drop a link in the comment. And if you have any questions or suggestions about what I should do in the future episodes, or just wanna say, hi, I like your videos, do so in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.